There's been quite a few times where a simulation wasn't working because of bad geometry. If you ever work with bad geometry, faces that are flipped, points that are floating around in places that they shouldn't be, all kinds of issues, then you'll know for certain that when you go to simulate on that geometry in any way, you run a huge risk of that geometry messing up your entire simulation. And it might be very difficult to troubleshoot and could waste you hours of time. So getting a clean mesh is vitally important as a Houdini artist. And what you find all the time if you download models online or you're given models is that dirty meshes are quite common. So let's take a look at a few ways you can fix that and we'll go from there. Here I have a chandelier that I found at Sketchfab, and this is a scan. So with scans and with models in general that come from anywhere online, you'll find weird things like this, or you'll find weird areas where, let's say a point along here isn't actually connected to the mesh, even though it overlaps with another point. And you'll find faces that are laying on top of each other. All kinds of bad things happen when you scan a model. <laughs> so let me show you my favorite technique for cleaning any model. It starts with the remesh to grid node. If we have this and we change the surface type here to thin plate, as I've mentioned in a previous quick tip before, this will basically take an offset away from the surface and draw the new surface there. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that down. You'll notice that this is taking a long time though. So let's go ahead and cancel that. What the remesh to grid will want is ideally a mesh that has more fused points. So I'm going to set down a fuse and I'm also going to be sure that we don't have any floating points. So that already took our points from about 1.157 million down to 962,000. There were a lot of overlapping points. Also, if we set down a clean, we can basically find areas of floating points and get rid of those. So we can remove degenerate primitives. I don't recommend this one because that can sometimes get rid of faces that you want to keep, but we can remove unused points right here. And that ought to help the remesh to grid. So let's try that again. Remesh to grid, thin plates, and plug that in. Now it works much more quickly. So this uh, looks really awesome so far. I'd say that's it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We are offsetting away from that surface, right? So we want to decrease that offset. But as I do that, we lose the mesh. So we also have to do that with our division size. I'll go ahead and just copy the division size and paste that as a relative reference of the offset because we never want to lose polygons like that. With the division size, let's set this to something like 0 0.01 and go in multiples of 10 until we start really dialing down those numbers and improving the quality of the mesh. Okay, so we have that. Let's go even further, zero, 05 on that. And it'll take a second here, but this is not too bad. We sometimes will find that it gets a little bit blobby or that we have these little divots around here. If you want to improve those divots, you can turn this down even more. Also, I like to dilate slash erode by this division size as well. So let's copy parameter, paste relative references. We're going to take this in the negative direction. So negative and then in parentheses, everything there. And I will take half of that times 0.5. So that brings everything in a bit. That will fix some of those divots. And if we improve the resolution even more, let's say 0 0.003, then I think this will be enough for what we need. Okay, so now this is a pretty high quality mesh. We zoom in here and all the topology is pretty uniform and you have to really zoom in to see 
the negative impacts of using this node. So that's great. Once we have this, we'll then use a poly reduce. And I only want to keep about 10% of these polygons. So I'll set that to 10 and plug it in. Okay, and now as we zoom out, we only have 250,000 polygons. You can obviously be more aggressive on this if you want to, but 250,000 isn't that bad if this is a hero object. So let's say that you're good with that. I'll do another clean, this time to get rid of any sort of attributes or again, floating points, things that shouldn't be there. We should be good as far as the cleanliness of this geometry, but getting rid of all the attributes is nice. I'll then set down a brand new normal node, smooth everything, and last but not least, we also want to transfer UVs. Fortunately, that's very easy. We have a labs UV transfer tool. So if we go to labs UV transfer, first input is the target geometry, that's the chandelier, and the original geo will be right here in that fuse. This will take a second, but it will project the UVs back onto the chandelier. Last but not least, we can double check that this works by re-enabling the textures in our viewport. And sure enough, we have all those textures back where they should be. Going to the UV view, we have all of this going on, so it does a pretty darn good job at finding even the smallest UV islands and reprojecting things appropriately. Okay, great. Well, that pretty much does it as far as my favorite workflow goes on cleaning up geometry. The geometry that we have right here is the cleanest that it's going to be. Now, there are a few things that you might want to consider if you have really bad geometry. So right before we did the remesh to grid, we also want to be sure that we don't have any holes that are too big on the mesh. So if you do find yourself with the mesh that has huge holes in it, then you can always use the polyfill and that will automatically find those holes and, might, and make a polygon out of that. So if we go single polygon right here, that will fix any polygons that uh, may be missing. But aside from that, that's the main workflow I'd recommend. We file cache this out and you can call this whatever you want, uncheck the time dependent cache and you're good to go. If you're trying to learn Houdini in a way that's thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, then check out cgforge.com. I have over 80 hours of content on here, as well as CG Forge Academy, which allows you to book professional consultations, set up one-on-one -on -one mentorships, and achieve your Houdini goals much more quickly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.